G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in on the north side of the map, playing in the color red as the Abbasid Dynasty, we've got Marine Lord. And on the south side of the map, playing as the Mongols, it's Puppy Paw in the blue. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to game number three in the semi-finals between these two absolute beasts of Age of Empires 4. I'm looking forward to this game because this is the final game in this series. The winner of this game will be going through to the grand final and will put it, be putting themselves at the table to win a potential. I don't know how much it is, but I'm, I'm going to go with $2,000. That's what I'm going to say. It's a little mini weekly tournament that Age of Empires 4 has been having recently. If you haven't checked it out, EGC TV. Check them out on Twitch. I'll leave a link in the description of where you can catch all their content. You can go and catch it live. And, uh, and join the online sensation. <laughs> I reminded myself of of, uh, of South Park. You guys, Kyle, go home, download World of Warcraft, and join the online sensation. <laughs> I got to start using that more. That's hilarious. I, I forget about that, man. God, wasn't that the best episode of, uh, of South Park? That was by far the best episode of South Park. It was just, I mean, look, there's been a lot of good episodes of that TV show, but... I digress, I digress. All right, well, let's talk a little bit about this matchup and what we can expect today because we've got Abbasid versus Mongols, a little bit of a classic matchup. And already we begin to see some excitement. Puppy Paw going to be opening up with a barracks, going to be moving it out to the Uvu, I suspect. Just wants to avoid that idle villager time. Realizes that it's going to take a little bit of time for him to get out here. Now, you've got to be dangerous when you're doing this. Marine Lord, fortunately, doesn't... Marine Lord, rather. Fortunately, doesn't have any units down in this area. Check out the Gur as well, just doing its thing. Doing its thing, doing a little bit of Gur scouting. Khan coming back with a couple of sheep as well. Going to be popping off that movement speed arrow. Misses, I think, the barracks. He would have been opting for it, but he is going to drop it down on the Uvu, get it down in the corner. We're going to start seeing some spearmen making their way out across the map. He's got them rallied to a bit of a weird spot over towards these sheep. He's yet to scan in this direction, but I think he, he I think that he thinks his enemy's over that way. Well, Puppy Paw, I suspect you've been playing a little bit too much Holy Island, a little bit too much Kawasan. Your enemy's nowhere near there, but... Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how it goes because we're going to have Marine Lord on the defense up against this outpost rush, this early tower rush. Villager already making his way out. He could just be going for a little bit of a weird, like not not taking the the uh, the direct line. I think that could be the play here as well. We can see him kind of rounding the corner because typically you just go straight through the middle, but that's obviously the most likely place that your enemy is going to be scouting out if they're expecting that you're going to be aggressive. But speaking of spotting that out, Marine Lord going to be running straight into the Spearman. So sees that, that coming out and... Puppy Paul probably thinking, what the hell are you doing out here? Why, why are you over on this side? Shouldn't you be over in the middle? And now that age up is coming through. We know that Marine Lord is going up. It's going to be the economic wing. No real surprise there. You know, I'd love to be surprised once by the landmarks that people go. I can tell pretty much, not even pretty much. I can tell you every single civilization and the landmark they're going to be making. Every single one. I guarantee you. Uh, and uh, there's no surprise. There's going to be the deer stones here. Imagine if he makes the silver tree. God, wouldn't I look like a fool? Wouldn't I look like an absolute fool? But I can tell you he's not. With 100% certainty, he's not. Outpost number one coming down. It's going to be blocking off the berries. It's going to be blocking the stone. Beautiful little outpost here. Now, unfortunately, for Marine Lord, not a lot of back resources. Now, he's got these resources over here, but I wouldn't really call them back resources. You know, back resources are kind of like, you know, the... Uh, the, the the deer line or the deer that spawns at the back or the gold vein that's up here unfortunately not a lot of resources down here spearman gonna be forcing that away and we actually see the the little a delete right there now i don't know whether uh that is going i can tell you actually it's not going to count uh towards that building being destroyed so puppy paw didn't get any attacks on it and the reason i know is because those villagers here uh have gathered up 10 or sets of 10 gold and you get 25 gold if you were to kill a uh a a building so we know that he didn't get that bounty but it's going to be the deer stones that does come up for puppy paw no real surprises there nice little opening here so far for him he's done a little bit of damage cost 50 wood for his enemy and that outpost is going to be in a, in a pretty decent spot now this is exactly what you want to be doing as the mongols you want to be trying to prevent your enemy from getting that second tc up because that's their win condition we often talk about the concept of win conditions what's a win condition the win condition is how you win a game and we can see Puppy Paw doing everything right at this point by stopping his enemy from reaching that win condition. Now, what does Puppy Paw do? What's his win condition? He gets to Castle Age and he kills his enemy. Uh, typically with knights or lances is how he wants to do it as the Mongols. Uh, but he may not do it in this matchup. He might go for more infantry. Might go for a heavy spear crossbow comp. We've been seeing players loving that recently. Could just be going for a full trash. Maybe mixed in a couple of improved siege engineers. Look to try and get out a... a uh, 
a Manganello or two. That could be an option for him. And now Spearman trying their best to take out the scout. Not going to have any luck as a handful. I say a handful. There's eight of these sheep coming in underneath the uh, the town center. And that's going to be a great help here because he doesn't have a lot of resources. And now we've got the first of the battering rams coming out for Marine Lord. He's looking to clean out this battering ram immediately. It's already down at five minutes and 20 seconds. We'll check in over on the other side of the map and see how Puppy Paw is doing as he begins researching arrow slits. I say researching arrow slits, but I feel like it's not... He's, he's producing arrow slits. You can see it right there. Producing arrow slits now at both of his outposts. You know, research is like tech. You know, like I'm researching wheelbarrow. I'm researching superior mobility, but I'm not researching arrow slits. I'm producing them. I still don't really like that. I'm in placing them. Maybe that's maybe that's the way to, to do it. I mean, technically we're producing this as well. 15 seconds on that upgrade. The new hardened Spearman upgrade. More, the most recent buff uh, that's come through for them. And now the Khan might get taken out. Khan might get taken out. Early stage of the game. Khan, don't go down. No! Good game. It's cold. The, the crowd goes wild as the Khan goes down. But don't worry. He'll be back. He'll be back. But uh, the crowd does love to call when when the uh, when the Khan does go down. And now moving up towards this northern position. Villagers looking to take a wood line out here. We'll watch and see if there's any any more outposts that get thrown down. Puppy Paw. I don't know where that villager's gone. He did have a villager that was out building outposts. Did it? Surely it didn't get killed. Did he send it back to base maybe? Did he just drop two outposts and leave it at that? Well, battering ram's coming out now. It's going to be able to take down this uh, this outpost. And we can see it's going to be four shots before it's out. I wouldn't be surprised if villagers immediately move forward and take out the stone. He's got 13 villagers back here. Don't be surprised if every single one moves out towards that position. More archers now coming around. You can see he's looking and looping uh, for that and manages to take out a villager. And it's an Abbasid villager, so it's double points because the screams are just extra wild. Battering Ram does successfully take out the stone outcropping. Uh, and now the question is, where does Marine Lord go from here? The answer is probably going to be into a second TC, into a Castle Age. But the question is going to be whether he can actually do so safely. He's invested a heavy amount into this Battering Ram already. Now, fortunately, he doesn't need a, a Siege Engineering to, to make this. But we see a Barracks coming down for Marine Lord. Extra curious. What is this all about? Why does he go for the Barracks here? I guess he's scouted out the stable that his enemies got. Maybe that's it. And we've got some Feudal Age Mongol coming out now. No Castle Age shenanigans at all. Heavy Feudal commitment here by both players. And this is very interesting. And now that Battering Ram is going to have to fall back away from that outpost. If it dares stay out there for any longer, it will potentially be taken out by the Horsemen. Now, keep in mind, these are only early Horsemen. Puppy Paw looking very strong at this stage of the game. He's going to get a couple of attacks onto that Battering Ram. He forces it back. And now that village is going to be pulled to repair the battering ram ever so slowly. You can see how long it takes. Damn, damn, Stan, it takes a while. But now looking to eventually add in that second TC. We can see units moving out to protect the, the stone yeah, the stone outcropping. Riding on board with Puppy Paw. The new Khan has risen from the dead. Like the vampire that it is. Actually, it's a, it's a zombie, isn't it? It's zombies that rise from the dead. The Khan is indeed a zombie. It's a little known fact about the Khan. Something you won't find on the Wikipedia page. It is actually a zombie. It's in numerous zombie movies. Uh, I, I actually remember watching The Walking Dead and seeing the Khan. I think it's episode one it comes in. It gets bitten uh, by a uh, by a walker. And uh, and yeah, and it comes back to life. So it, it, is, it is a possibility. So don't let your dreams be memes. But uh, <laughs> more and more units are coming out. We see double production on the archers. He's heavily committing to this feudal age play. Something that we haven't seen. Feudal Mongol. Is it even decent though? Like, what do you gain from being in a, in in a feudal fight? Let let's say hypothetically, it's a feudal fight. You've got the Mongols up against the the Abbasid. Who's gonna win? I feel like it's the Abbasid. Like, surely the Abbasid have the bonus. They've got the cheaper villages. That's 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 gotta be it, right? Un unless you manage to take out a lot of villages. Like, maybe you get a super duper good raid with the Mongol Khan, and you've got the movement speed. Like, I I can't imagine how the Mongols win this. Uh, in, in the in the um in in the feudal age but now gotta be careful here Cam camel archer might get taken out no we've got to be forced back away from the horseman archer numbers looking pretty healthy he's actually been caught out of position here a little bit of an aggressive push now i, I guess it's the consequence of marine lord really not knowing how many units his enemies got out but obviously that's too many units for him to deal with he's gonna get cleaned up completely and i was just talking about you know how, how does abbasid dynasty lose to the mongols in the feudal age but Hey, over, over committing like that, heading out into the middle of the map with no scouting information. He's got absolutely no information about what his enemy is up to. The consequence of losing that scout a little bit earlier. And things looking really painful for him at this point. 
Now I'm going to be falling back towards that wood line, but all the units going to be moving in. Marine Lord going to be trying his best to defend it. The villagers on the wood looking to try and pump out archers, looking to try and pump out cavalry, but not going to have too much of a chance here. And now that attack speed arrow going to be fired off. Villagers going to be going down. Spearman getting taken out as well. Marine Lord looking like, like he might be pushed onto the ropes all of a sudden. And in the event that he goes up towards that wood line, it can very easily be cleaned up for him. Needs to fall back from the town center. It is notorious for how much damage it does. And now, indeed, he moves towards that wood line. And Marine Lord idling a lot of villagers 24 villagers running back and forth he's sitting on 33 villagers at the moment marine Lord. compare that over to his opponent who's on 35 there's no indication of a castle age coming through we continue to see more and more units moving across the map and is this a sign of things to come did the recent changes really affect the meta this much where people have said well you know what i'm not going to play a a castle age mongol style anymore it's just it's it's too easy to beat I, uh, I don't have anything really going for me with it, so I'm just going to stick to a Feudal Age play. Because if so, I welcome it. I absolutely love this. I think this is exactly what we want to see. That You know, those Drush FCs that we always used to see out of the Mongols became very predictable. And now all of a sudden, you've got Mongols with a new play in their handbook, and I welcome it. It is great to see. But now 400 stone has been gathered up by Marine Lord. He's going to be able to drop down a second town center. But the question is, where does he go? He's got the first hunt that's out pretty far in front of his base. Second hunt even further away. Nothing behind his town center. No safe berries. No nothing back there. I mean, realistically, I guess he could throw a TC up over here. But even then, it's pretty far away from his main base. Things really not looking good right now for Marine Lord. Composition here coming out from his enemy. Pretty decent. A lot of archers involved. Puppy Paw looking really good as he just goes for heavy archers. Plus one ranged attack. Plus one ra um, ranged armor as well. We'll check in with Marine Lord and see how he's doing as he's yet to add in a blacksmith. And indeed, it's going to be villagers moving up towards this northern position, looking to drop down the town center. And I suspect, yeah, it looks like it's going to be exactly uh, where I thought it would be. Oh, it's pretty close. It's on, it's on the gold mine. So he uh, he secures the gold. He secures all three of these resources. So a pretty smart move there from him. But the second town center. So now it's the waiting game. Marine Lord needs to make sure he doesn't die within the next five to ten minutes. That's the key thing he for him here. And now he's going to be... Fallen back off this wood line. Once again, he's been hit many times on it. Single Spearman in here. He's yet, yet to get that play. Plus one ranged armor. Only that single Spearman going to be able to defend this point. More Spearman now rejoining with their friends. He's up to four. Town center up towards the north. I feel like Puppy Paw kind of knows that it's there, but not really. He's, yet, he's anchoring towards that side, but still yet to push through. Plus one ranged armor also coming through for him. Puppy Paw. We'll wait and see whether he looks to add in any more potential production, any more potential... Battering Rams, it could be the way that he goes, but more spear. Look at this double spear production, getting upgrades behind this. The Battering Ram just moving up on its own. A little bit of a scouting ram. You know, we, we see these guys occasionally scouting out the uh, scouting out the mountains. He's moving directly up towards his position, though, and he, there, there is a town center up there. Now, I, I think he might know about the berries. He might just have them on the edge of his vision and does spot out the town center. Battering Ram has indeed found that. Marine Lord going to be in a bit of a tough spot. There's nowhere near enough units here to defend this. Can you imagine if he had the units that had died earlier? Uh, out in that early aggression and now trying his best to hold on here this battering ram going to be sealing the deal for that town center over on that eastern side the music it's getting pumped up loud ladies and gentlemen i don't know if you guys can hear it as much as i can but things getting wild the marine lord going to be tapping out puppy paw going through to the grand finals incredibly exciting stuff here as we begin to see the mongol feudal age coming to power ladies and gentlemen check out egc tv the road to red bull wallalow legacy is happening this weekend 15 gmt saturday sunday be there or be square